Hi friends, so let's start lecture 60 today on our helicopter dynamics course. And today I'm going to discuss the flow K theory for stability, which is a general theory for handling periodic differential equations. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. So let's recall from our previous lectures the nature of the differential equation. So essentially we have the equation m q double dot plus c q dot plus k q equals f. Now what is interesting about this equation is that m, c and k are also functions of time and in general m, c and k contain periodic terms. So that's something which is very interesting for many rotor dynamics problems, especially the helicopter problem in forward flight. Now, generally you are used to differential equations where f is a function of time, and this may also be periodic. For example, it could be sine psi or some function of sine or cosine. But when m, c, and k are functions of time, this problem becomes much more complicated. So we are generally used to f containing periodic terms but m c k containing periodic terms essentially constitutes a periodic coefficient system so the coefficients of q double dot q dot and q are now periodic functions so the first thing we do before we try to use floquet theory is that we convert this m c k system into a system of first order differential equation. So this system has the form y dot is at y plus gt. So essentially now the information about the system matrices m, c and k is contained in a and the information about the force vector f is contained in this vector g. And now at and gt are periodic and the time period is t. So that's something to remember that at and gt are both periodic functions. Now, when we want to investigate stability, I have previously explained that we can set the forcing term to zero. So essentially what we do is that we set gt equal to zero when we are looking for stability. And we also seek a solution of the following form yt is bt cke pt where bt is a 2n by 2n matrix yt we know is a 2n by 1 vector and the cke pkt term is also a 2n by 1 vector now this squared matrix we have defined as bt is also periodic so essentially we can say that b at capital t equals b at 0 where recall that capital T is being used for the period of the system. So in a typical rotor dynamic system, this is going to be equal to 2 pi. So capital T is going to be equal to 2 pi. And what this is saying is that at zero, the system is at a certain state. And at time capital T, it essentially comes back to that same state. So that is what we mean by periodicity of the system. So now let us look at the solution we have started with. We have started with the solution BT, CKE, PKT. And now let's look at Y0. So to get Y0, we substitute T equal to 0 into this equation. And this gives us B0 into CK. Okay. And then we can also write Y at time period T is B at time period T into CKE, PK at time period T. So all I have done in these two equations is I have substituted t equal to 0 and t equal to capital T into this equation, and I have got these two equations. Now, the second equation here, that is yt equation, can be also written in terms of b0, ck, e, pkt, because remember that bt equal to b0. So here we are bringing in the periodicity of the system. So now what we do is we can actually express yt as this 
multiplication of one system here y1 y2 all the way going on and then y1 0 y2 0 all the way going on here now what does this nomenclature mean essentially what it means is that y superscript 1 is the solution at t equals capital t of the basic equation with gt equal to 0 so remember the equation y dot is a y and the initial conditions you take for this case is you set y 1 0 equals 1 and all the remaining y i 0 equals 0 okay so that's how you get y 1 now you repeat the same process so you can obtain y 2 by setting y 2 0 equals 1 and all the remaining y's as 0 and so on so by varying this particular initial condition you can get a series of solutions and then all these solutions would essentially be contained in y1 y2 all the way forward now what this lets you do is that it lets you constitute a very important matrix known as the floquet transition matrix so the floquet transition matrix q has this form y1 y2 all the way going on like this to 2n and this square matrix has size 2n by 2n this is known as the floquet transition matrix and it plays a very important role in the stability of periodic systems so now we can write our yt as q 2n by 2n system into y0 and then i can also write this as q b0 into ck from my definition of y0 Now I can also write yt as b0 cke pkt which we showed previously in a slide sometime before. So therefore I can equate these two yt's and I can get this particular form that q b0 equals lambda k b0 and now you can clearly see here that this is an eigenvalue problem and essentially you need to find the eigenvalues of this transition matrix q so that's a major problem which we are now going to look at now essentially what we have done is we have replaced this term e p k t by lambda k to get this solution so essentially when you solve this problem for lambda k you get lambda k and then you know that lambda k is equal to e to the power p k t so you need to extract p k from this equation So this particular type of problem can be solved in general and this problem is going to yield certain values of lambda k for the state transition matrix q. Now once you have obtained lambda k you can obtain p k as 1 by t log of lambda k. So I take log of both sides of this equation and then I obtain this here and then pk is going to have two parts it's a complex number so it's going to have a real part and it's going to have an imaginary part so now let's look more closely at pk here now these two parts are expressed in these equations so you can clearly see that this pk is known as the stability exponent and then I have extracted the real part here and the imaginary part here. Now, the real part of this is quite straightforward. You can square the real part and the imaginary part, take the log and you will get this value here. Remember that capital T is the time period, which is typically two pi for periodic systems. And also the second part, which is the frequency related part, you can obtain by one by T uh, inverse of tan lambda k i by lambda k r so now what do these values represent physically now if you think about it the real part measures the growth or decay of response so if this real part is greater than zero then you have instability of that particular mode and the part which is related to the imaginary part that essentially reflects the frequency of vibration of the system so 
omega k is the frequency of vibration. Now, what would happen is that you probably know from trigonometry that whenever you take the inverse of a function such as tan, there are going to be many values, and this is a thing which comes out in all sinusoidal type functions and trigonometric functions and so on. So because of this multi-valued nature, you would actually get many possible solutions in terms of the frequency of the system. Now, if you want to get the correct value of this frequency, you can get it based on the physical knowledge of the frequency. For example, if we are dealing with the helicopter problem, we can figure out which is the fifth mode, which is the first lag mode, which is the second torsion mode, and so on. And we can think about these frequencies being the stable frequencies or the unstable frequencies because engineers don't just like to know that the system is unstable they like to know which particular mode is causing the instability so they can go and add more damping to that mode and mitigate that instability problem now the second way which is a more mathematical way to solve this problem is by taking a careful look at the eigenvectors corresponding to these particular frequencies and from there also you can extract some information about the true nature of this problem so there is some work on this uh, particular way of interpreting the values which come out of locate theory which has been used in some codes and comprehensive codes so essentially today's lecture summarized the fact that periodic differential equations are very important aspects of roti rotating systems and all type of rotor systems and therefore we need to investigate the stability of these systems and for that we need to calculate the transition matrix the transition matrix itself is obtained by solving the governing differential equation after setting the forces to be zero with certain specified initial conditions and then once you have obtained the transition matrix you can find the stability behavior of the system before i close i'll just mention that the calculation of the transition matrix is very cumbersome and therefore floquet analysis takes a large amount of computer time and it's one of the reasons that whenever you are doing a stability calculation for a helicopter dynamics problem the code is likely to take a large amount of computer time for this case now computer time aspects get mitigated as the power of computers keeps getting more and more but still relative to some different parts of the analysis such as calculating the blade natural frequencies this part is much more time cumbersome so i will stop this lecture here and i will see you in my next video see you then